Hi, so this is the first part of a series of videos uh, dedicated to topic six of the IBHL uh, syllabus. In this video, I hope to address some of uh, 6.1, um, if time allows, maybe even all, but probably just about half. Now, the first uh, statement, uh, as per 6.1, says uh, students should know, uh, should have an informal idea of what, of what a limit is, of what uh, continuity is, and what convergence is. And um, while it's true that only an informal idea of these concepts uh, could allow you to answer a lot of questions, given you practice enough questions, uh, it is really, uh, in my opinion at least, easier to answer questions concerning limits, uh, convergence, and continuity if you actually know the proper definition of what these things mean. So you're not totally, you know, confused as to, as to what these things really mean. Because informal definitions usually just don't get, get the actual job done. So we'll address the proper definitions of each of these, uh, each of these things in this video. Now, I won't be using any analogies here. I'll just be stating the definition and then stating some facts about limits and sort of trying, I'll try my best to appeal to intuition whenever possible. So, the limit of a function at a point. I guess that should be this title. The limit of a function at a point. Okay. All right. So we often write limit as x approaches a of f of x equals some some, some real number, so l. This is often a statement uh, you'll find somewhere. So what does this exactly mean? Well, I'll write out the definition. Uh, word for word for now, and then I'll explain what it means. So. All right, so this is the actual definition, and it says for all epsilon greater than zero, so this is epsilon, there exists a delta greater than zero, such that if the distance between x and a is less than delta, then the distance between f of x and l is less than epsilon. So actually, graphically, this really does appeal to intuition. It really does make some intuitive sense because most students already understand the notion that when we say a limit exists, it means that the function gets closer and closer to the limit as x gets closer and closer to something. And this is really just a more precise way of saying that. So suppose this is some function and it looks fairly continuous so it looks like the limit as x approaches a if this is a of this function y equals f of x exists so the y-axis is the x-axis okay so what does that mean well according to the definition for any number epsilon greater than zero there exists a delta greater than zero such that if the distance between x and a is less than delta, then the distance between the values of the function, so you can think of f of x really as just points on this y-axis, so the distance between f of x and this limit l can be made less than epsilon. 
So let's pick a certain epsilon. Let's say uh, epsilon is 0.1. Okay. Now I'm going to draw a strip. So first of all, let's say this is L. And I'm going to draw a strip of width um, of width 0.1. Or actually with point two, sorry, around L. So this upper bound here is L plus point one. This lower bound here is L minus point one. And you and you see immediately that for all values between L minus point one and L plus point one, for all values within this strip, um, the distance between those points and L is certainly less uh, than 0.1. Okay, so if I pick some random value within this strip over here, I can be assured that the distance, this total distance between this point and L, which actually I'll extend as a line itself, so I'll extend this line over here to represent L. Oops. Okay, just imagine it's kind of horizontal. All right, so it's clear that for any point we choose within this green strip, the distance between that point on the y-axis and L is definitely less than 0.1. Because as you can see, L is actually the midpoint of this green strip. So since the strip has width 0.2, for any other points within the strip, they must lie uh, less than 0.1 away from L. And I say within the strip, meaning the interior of the strip. We're not counting the boundary of the strip, because obviously points on the boundary of the strip um, are a distance exactly 0.1 away from L. Okay, so that's uh, that's this uh, this green strip, and according to the definition, we should be able to find the interval around A. An interval around A. It's a bad color. Uh, choose orange. Okay, we should be able to find. An interval around A, so A plus delta, A minus delta, and let's say for the purposes of this example, delta is uh, 0 0.01. Okay, delta is 0 0.01, so 0 0.01, 0 0.01. So there exists some interval around A so that as long as I, I'm picking x values uh, within within this uh, this interval, so as long as I'm picking those x values, um, the values of my function at those x values should lie within this green strip of uh, total width 0.2. Now actually I've left out something a bit important um, in this definition. Over here I should really add a greater than zero. So I'll just read it out again. For all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that if the distance between x and a is larger than zero, less than delta, then the distance between f of x and l can be made less than epsilon. Now the reason I've uh, actually drawn this interval around A is that all points within this interval of A um, are a distance away from A less than delta because I've chosen my delta value to be uh, point zero point zero one in this example and are greater than zero if we exclude A itself. So by saying that the distance between your point and A has to be greater than zero um, technically, you could have a limit of a function at a point, A, where the function itself is not even defined. So, just to sketch an example, uh, 
if I have a curve like this, and it's not even defined here, so there's a big hole here. Well, not a big hole, it's just not defined at this point, so I've sort of blown up this point. And technically, a limit at that point could, could still exist. Okay. So, again, as per the definition, as long as I choose a point within this interval around A, and I take the value of f at that point, then the value of f at that point is always um, less than 0 0.1 away from L. Now, that, now that's just because I've chosen my epsilon value to be 0 0.1. But if I chose my epsilon value uh, to be even less than 0 0.1, so maybe 0 0.000001, Okay, so my interval gets even smaller around L, I should still be able to find some interval around A, so maybe it'll have to be an even smaller interval around A. So, actually I'll draw that with a different color as well. So, perhaps this interval around A is now needed, but as long as we, as we are within this interval of A, and we choose points inside this interval, then we are guaranteed that the values of f at those points are a distance away from l less than our epsilon value, which in this case is uh, 0 0.000001. Okay, and, and the key is we can do this for all epsilon. So essentially what that means is no matter how close we want our function to be away from our, dis our, our limit, we can always find an interval around A, where as long as we're picking x values within this interval, the values of our function lie a distance less than epsilon away from L. So this ties in very neatly with the notion that the function eventually gets closer and closer to L. Okay, so that's this is the actual definition of uh, the limit of a function at a point. And in fact, we can define continuity now very easily. So we say a function f is continuous at a point if the limit of the function at that point, actually let's call the point A, is equal to the value of the function at the point itself. So there's some obvious things already. First of all, the limit can't exist if f of A doesn't exist. So the function has to be defined at A for the function to be continuous at A. So f has to be uh, defined at a. Uh, what else? Well, in class you you might come across this notion of a right hand limit, a right hand limit, and a left hand limit. And actually, these things are are actually made up. They don't really exist. I mean, you wouldn't really talk about right hand limits or left hand limits. Uh, pretty much ever. What they really are are just a byproduct of the definition of a limit. So remember, uh, it said for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that if x is a distance away from a larger than zero, less than delta, then f of x uh, lies a distance less than epsilon away from l. So this here means as long so let's say this is A on the number line, as long as we're picking points within this interval of A, either from the right or from the left, f of x should still lie a distance less than epsilon away from L. So the reason we have this notion of a right-hand limit and a left-hand limit is because we need uh, all points with uh, to either to the right of A and within this interval 
or to the left of A and within this interval to satisfy this property.